everyone, Hamer back with another Mission Impossible episode review. This time we're reviewing Season 6, Episode 15, which is called The Bride. So this one starts with a guy named Joe Corvin berating another guy named Anders for stealing money that Anders was supposed to courier to Switzerland for the syndicate. Corvin gets his man Richie to take Anders out, and a fellow named Mellinger asks Joe how he plans to move money without Anders' diplomatic pouch. Joe says he'll figure something out. Meanwhile, Richie pushes Anders down an elevator shaft. Jim gets instructions in a pool locker this time. The mission, you'll never believe this, but the IMF must put Corvin out of business because conventional law enforcement agencies can't seem to do it. Okay. In the apartment scene, we see a somewhat lifelike dummy of Casey, a guest agent named Bob, some other little gadgetry and whatnot, and word that Corvin is expecting a mail-order bride from back in Ireland. Off we go to the airport where Ingenue Casey arrives as Kathleen and is introduced to her new husband-to-be. Jim comes up as helpful airline freight man Bevins, giving Casey as Kathleen some medicine she left on the plane. Barney visits Mellinger and says his name is Kingby. He says he worked with Anders, he was actually Anders' boss, and would like to continue the arrangement that they had at a better rate than Corvin was offering. Mellinger warns Barney that he's playing a very dangerous game with his offer, but Barney says he's not worried. Willie scopes out Colin's mortuary and messes with some of the phone wiring, well, that'll pay off later, while Joe tells Casey not to ask questions about his business or any of the people she meets at his place. She says she understands as Joe gives her a very expensive necklace uh, at a party he's throwing to introduce her to his, his friends. And Mellinger arrives telling Joe about Barney and that Barney has been visiting some of his other colleagues to try and push his aggressive offer. The next morning as Barney leaves a building, a thug gets into his car and tells him to drive. Corvin's men work Barney over a little bit to no avail. Barney tells Corvin he just wants to be in on the deal. He did all he did just to get Corvin's attention, and he wants half of the tape. And tells Corvin he doesn't seem to have any other option. Casey, as Kathleen, acts agitated that Joe isn't around. Gets testy with a fairly blasé Richie. Airline man Jim calls for Casey, and Richie overhears her conversation. Setting up a, they're setting up a meeting. He, uh, Richie follows her cab to Jim's hotel room, breaking down the door and finding Jim preparing a heroin fix for her. Richie calls Corvin and tells him about it. To his abject shock, and Corvin heads over in a rage, berating his junkie fiancé and telling Richie to take her home. Jim tells Corvin he'll be gone on a flight back to Europe later in the day and won't bother him any further. But Corvin is intrigued at the idea of knowing an airline employee who can hide items in his personal luggage, has friends and customs who don't ask questions, and proposes a deal to move the money, telling his boys to cut Barney loose after demonstrating that they have his offer on tape, so he would be stupid to talk about what happened. Corvin returns home as Casey signals Jim and takes a pill which simulates death. He and Richie find her slumped on a bed. Jim calls and summons Corvin to the airport as there's new security which hinders their plan, and Joe tells Richie to take Casey to Collins Mortuary for cremation. When the hearse arrives, Barney puts a hole in its radiator. At the airport, Willie sends a hearse towards a plane, with Jim explaining that a sealed casket probably wouldn't be searched. And Corvin, of course, has a new idea. At the mortuary, a new hearse is ordered, because the other's radiator is out, and Corvin calls with his new plan for a custom casket, and the body will have to be embalmed. Willie, Barney, and Bob pull up in an ambulance with an accident victim, with Willie asking if Collins wants a body for a funeral. Collins agrees. Barney calls Collins to keep him busy on the phone while Willie and Bob bring the body in. Willie knocks out Harris with the standard IMF ring. Bob takes his place. Casey is loaded on a gurney and taken out, replaced by the dummy, and wakes up unhurt. Mellinger visits Corvin's place to oversee the arrangements and is brought up to date by Richie about what's going on. The two head over to the mortuary together, where Collins has prepared a nice, unassuming pillow to hold the cash. The coffin is loaded up and given an embassy seal with all, with all the necessary paperwork. All the interested parties head to the airport, given the unusual circumstances they want to see what's going on. On the way there, a hidden Barney takes a pillow out of the coffin, reseals it, and then exits from below the car at the airport, meeting Willie in the IMF van. They can do that because of the hearse that the IMF brought to Colin's mortuary that was requested. The coffin takes a tumble as it's being loaded on the plane, and the ruse is discovered, with a dummy falling out 
and the pillow gone. Corvin, of course, can't explain it. Mellinger questions Jim, who says that all he did was make the arrangements with the airline and get Corvin a couple of tickets to Miami. Hmm. The bad guys get into their cars and head back to Joe's place, where they find a very much alive Casey coming down the stairs with two tickets to Miami in her purse. Mellinger tells her to take a walk and tells and takes Joe to the open elevator shaft, demanding the money. Casey calmly walks out and joins the others as the IMF head away. Mission accomplished. I'm going to give this episode a grade of a C+. This is actually the second episode of the season that was filmed. Uh, the first one was Blind, uh, which was the first episode that was shown. This was designed to be a showcase for Linda Day George, which makes a lot of sense, obviously. They did something very, very similar with Leslie Warren in season five, where they had the episode Flipside, where she got to sing, and she was basically the focus of the episode. Makes perfect sense. I find this to be a, a good, a decent episode. It's a well-executed, solid, cogent story. It's a better story than I actually recall it being, but I'll have more to say about it as we go. Uh, so, so, so that part is good. The story is solid. Also, uh, what's really good, I liked the, the actors. James Gregory is okay. Uh, more to say about him later as well. Brad Dexter, who plays Frank Mellinger in this episode, I think is really, really good. I totally buy him as a mob figure. He, he, he's dressed uh, for the part. His mannerisms are, and, and, and his speech is perfectly right for the part. I totally, totally buy him. I, I really like him. Uh, I also like uh, this guy who I don't know a whole heck of a lot about. I can't find much about him. Charles Deerkop, who plays Richie. He's also, you know, he fits the profile of, you know, a, a, a guy that somebody like uh, Joe Corvin would have as his right-hand man, you know, enforcer, driver, you know, whatever you want to say. Uh, th those two, I think, fit their roles really, really well. Also, things that I, things that I thought were really, really good. The ending... It is, is, is nice. Uh, Casey coming down the stairs and being very, very much alive. It reminds me of the end of the uh, episode in season four called The Brothers. If you recall that one, where I pointed out, you know, where the king at the end of the episode is very, very much alive and standing at the top of the stairs. And then there's, you know, the, 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 the show theme power up. And I was just like, yeah, the, 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 that's like a fist pumping moment. Um, it would have been kind of odd under these circumstances. I was thinking, boy, wouldn't it be great if they just had the Mission Impossible theme here? But I don't know. It would just, it, it just seemed like, nah, it would be kind of out of place under the circumstances. Um, I don't know if I would have minded so much or not had they done that. But, but, but I really did like that scene, the way that it all comes together, because, you know, so much happens. There, there, there's a fair bit of, I, I think what makes it really, really good is there's a fair bit of action, right? With, you know, guys going to the airport and loading up the coffin and all of that stuff happening. And, and, you know, Casey's just kind of out of the way for a little bit and we kind of forget about her a little bit. And then all of a sudden, there she is. She appears. So I, I, I think, I think that was staged really, really well. Um, I really, really liked it. I also liked the, the stuff that the IMF pulled at the mortuary in the third act. That was really well executed. And, you know, visually, it was really, really great. Right now, you know, Willie and Bob doing all of the stuff that they have to do to pull the switcheroo and get Casey out, replace her with the dummy, take out Harris, Barney distracting Collins uh, on the phone. And you can see the Collins are getting really annoyed that, oh, my God, I got this guy on the phone. He's asking me a questions. Give me a break. I got all this stuff I want to do. <laughs> you know, and that, that, that was really, really good. I liked that. Also, there, there, there is some solid teamwork. Most of the work of the plot is driven, of course, by Linda Day George. As I mentioned, this is supposed to be somewhat of a showcase for her. Well-deserved. She needs to be established as the female presence for the show. And I think she does a really, really admirable job here uh, in the role that she plays. The roles, multiple roles, I suppose you could say. Uh, you know, she, she, she goes through a lot of different kinds of... Um, 
you know, emotions, and, 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 and I think she emotes rather well. It made me think about the previous uh, episode earlier in the season, the one called Shape Up, if you remember that one, the one that was down by the docks, and where she played that girl Martha Murphy. And in that one, she, you know, she also had to emote a lot as, you know, this kind of like mentally disturbed figure. But that one didn't seem genuine. Here, it really, really did come across as a lot more genuine to me. And I really think that this is one of, if not the best, Linda Day George performance. So that, that was really, really good. Moving on to some of the things that were not so good. I mentioned that this is a well-executed and it's a solid story. You can't really find much in the way of plot holes in, in the story. But... It is very, very predictable. We see the Casey dummy at the very beginning. In the apartment scene, Barney gives her, here's a pill, it's going to simulate death. Okay, we can kind of figure out where this is going, uh, right? And to kind of follow along with that as another kind of point-counterpoint. I mentioned that James Gregory is okay. Fine performance as Joe Corvin. And he is engaging, he's not boring, uh, but... He's a lame schmuck. Uh, I, I tried to say that, okay, is this something where the IMF is really putting something over on him so heavily that a reasonable person would, wouldn't fall prey to, prey to this? I, and, and, and I just have to say no. This is a very, very standard pennies from heaven plot. It would have fit in very, very well. It back in season two, uh, you know, you would have had a problem at that point because, you know, you would have had five IMF members and there, there really isn't that much, um, you know, f to be executed by the IMF. That would have been a problem back in season two. But here it's not so bad. You know, so many things just happening at just the right time. And because of his single minded, easily manipulated f focus, if you want to call it that, Corvin just has one thing he needs to do. He needs to find a way to get that money to Zurich. And so here it is. The pennies from heaven. Hey, I happen, you know, Jim says, I happen to work for an airline and I'm going back to Zurich later today. Oh, wow, that's convenient. Uh, the hearse, Willie sending the hearse showing up to the plane at just the right time for Corvin to see it and then get that brainwave. Yeah, it, it, there's not a high degree of difficulty here in this mission. The IMF is really able to predict Corvin's moves every step of the way, I feel. Uh, they know exactly what the, he's going to do. They know how he's going to react. Uh, and it's just really a matter of walking him through the steps. So that is a really big problem in this episode. That And, and there's not really a whole lot of ground uncovered here. You know, we've seen the IMF kind of classic frame uh, before. Uh, as I mentioned, it's well executed, but but it's but but there's no new ground covered here. Also, I want to point out the end the end of this episode, the very end, after Casey being alive is revealed, the Disney villain death. This is a bigger problem in the revival series. In so many episodes in the revival, we see the villains, the antagonists, get a Disney villain death or a Disney villain punishment where, you know, the, 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 the bad guy, usually it's a guy, the bad guy gets, you know, his comeuppance in the way that he dished out punishment. Uh, and in this case, you know, we see, you know, Corbin sending a guy out to be pushed out and down an elevator shaft. And now at the end, okay, well, Joe, here's your elevator shaft. Uh, and, and I wouldn't say that it's necessarily bad, but when the writers do that, I don't know. It, it, it just kind of puts into my mind that maybe there's some, you know, a, maybe a little bit of laziness on the part of the writers and saying, okay, well, you know, here, here's how we can kind of uh, bring an end to this episode. I don't know. It's, uh, it's a little bit up in the air. The whole thing with the ending, after, you know, it, it can be argued, and I was thinking this, and I realized that they needed to do this for the purposes of the story, but when Mellinger at the airport, you know, finds that, you know, 
the coffin contains a dummy. It doesn't actually contain Casey. And the pillow with the money is gone. That's really kind of the end of the episode in a sense. Then he says, okay, come on, we're going back to Joe's place. The only reason for that really is because Jim told him, well, I've got him two tickets to Miami. So Mellinger might have in the back of his mind that, okay, some, something's not right here. And maybe it is something about, you know, Casey. He does mention in that last episode, oh, yeah, the, yeah, the young woman got to you, didn't she, Joe? Right? You figured you might have some angle here. Uh, so it, it, it's a little bit contrived. That last scene where they all go back to Joe's place, it wasn't so bad. I, I would call it a little bit of a nit, but it it's okay for the purposes of the story. It's not too over-contrived, I guess I would say. Uh, having the Disney villain death be a part of that did put in my mind that maybe, just maybe, this was a little bit of the writers not knowing any other way to kind of put, put a bow on this episode. So... I'm comfortable with my grade of C+, plus, given everything that I've said. And I think that's about it. Thank you all, as always, for watching. It's always much appreciated. Please like this review video. Please uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And please leave your comments. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Thank you again, and I'll see you next time.